Crossroads Media. This sport is nasty sometimes, all right? I just watched seven hours of baseball expecting the Phillies to win. I have it written down right here at the top of my notepad. Phillies sweep the doubleheader, and I put that down the second. Bryce Harper hits a home run. You take the lead, and I had to cross it out, and it says now split. Now, you can see some other things. Alvarado, hand cramps. What in the world is that? I have no idea what the update is with this dude. I'm not buying it. I think they're hiding something. At the end of the day, they should have won both of these games. I'll forget about it if you win tomorrow and then you win on Thursday and you take three of four. Uh, But this still sucks because this was in your hands. Craig Kimbrell allows a home run. Hoffman, you saw the ups and the downs of Hoffman when he inherited Ranger Suarez's bases loaded. He got the pop-up we were looking for. Unfortunately, that didn't go very well the next inning for Hoffman. I just thought maybe, maybe Bryce Harper finally going deep again would be enough for them to hold on against a really bad team. I guess I was wrong. In the ninth, did you feel good? The top of your lineup up, Kyle Schwarber, who's been seeing the baseball way better lately, does a check swing and grounds out to first base. Nick goes down. Bryce goes down swinging after working an at-bat. Continue to pound them in the next two games. That's what it comes down to. I got to be honest, at this rate and at this age and at this uh, uh, level, this level of play, we're talking Major League Baseball. Maybe before in my life, you could find a time where I was excited thinking about baseball nonstop every single second, every single pitch for hours and hours, and it takes me from late afternoon through the night. We're talking majors, man. I'm exhausted just watching them perform. I don't know how they're actually out there doing it. Don't you think we're past that? When you're six, seven, eight, nine years old, you can run around for ages. I walked half a mile today to get a mental health walk going, get some fresh air, put in some music, go to a local park. I barely did any damage. I can't pick up my feet right now. I have three steps Three steps in between my little basement section. Actually, I got way more after you make the turn. But anyway, I can't feel my body. I walked half a mile. How in the hell should we expect professionals at this clip to be playing uh, 18 innings? It doesn't add up to me. Stupid. Stupid. They had to do it. I know. The weather yesterday and all that. Blah, 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 blah. And if they won these two, I probably wouldn't have said a damn thing. But they didn't win these two. Game one, the offense was flying. Jake Cave goes the distance. My guy, Kyle Schwarber. I don't know how you hate him. I don't know how. The fools that despise him, I can't comprehend it. The guy rakes. He has 30 home runs already, and he's heating up. He hit two in one game. It's happening. Trey Turner, the electricity is back. When you do the cool slide that Trey Turner does, that means his swag's back. That's what it is. He's got his arrogance back. It's him smelling himself going for a nice slide. It's also tremendous to see him beat out an infield single, snag second base, and then fly around the bases to come home to score. It's magnificent. He also helps you out in a, in a one nothing lead in the first inning. How about that for some life in game one? Uh, there was the, the Kyle had five RBIs. Uh, there was Zach Wheeler. So that was a weird transition between what Turner did for us and game one. But just looking around at Zach Wheeler, the starter for game one, it didn't start pretty by any means. You want to talk about velocity? That could be described. He ends up relaxing, though, and goes seven, uh, six innings with three earned runs. You take that any day. But the look of it and the aesthetic of it wasn't necessarily pleasing. 
And with Ranger, he did enough as well. He did load him up with two outs. His teammates got his back, though. Castro at third, he stinks. So far, he stinks. He looks overwhelmed and overmatched with basic plays. And speaking of pitching, I think I have to at least note that when Craig Kimbrell was on the mound, he should have got a strike three call. He got boned by the guy behind the dish. And the umps were out to lunch. How many times do we have to call for a replay? Yo, dude, what's that? You're new? What's that? You're young? What's that? You have some nerves? Figure it the hell out. You can't be messing up so brutally. Come on, it's challenge after challenge. Overturned, overturned. Successful for the Phils and their challenge. Of course it is. Use your damn eyeballs. Watch the play. What a joke. You're able to overcome it, though. Thank the Lord. The one time I praised technology slowing down the damn game. Get it right. Pissing me off. I knew it was going to take forever for these two games to finish. Holy hell. Rojas in outfield. I said, holy hell. When he was barging into the wall, I think I saw Todd Zalecki tweet out that the catch he made at the end of game one is basically a 10% catch rate. 10%! That's how quick he was getting out there. He's awesome out in center field. What's awesome is, in a larger scale, it looks as if this team's offense is starting to produce. Alec Bohm. Another homer. I love, 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 love that offensive weapon, Alec Boehm. I'm obsessed with it. He'd be one of my favorite players every single night if he drove the baseball like that. I'm dead ass serious. It is beautiful. It is so smooth. It is so crisp. It's so sound. When he squares it up, it is one of the purest things I've seen. I love it. Let this be real. Let this be legitimate. Let this happen more often. It would be naive of me to expect him to be what I really want. But if we start creeping our way over 20, can we get to 20, please, please, 20? That's huge. He elevates. You put him in a different category. This team. It's a different monster. That was so large at that time of the game. You go back to back. Kyle Schwarber, top of the lineup, does his thing. Alec Bohm, top of the lineup, does his thing. It's starting to form together. That's why it's nasty as we sit here because they are doing a lot of things right and they are trending in the right direction. They were built to mash. I don't know if it's sustainable to win in other ways as long as they were with so many guys going through funks and whenever someone got out of one, someone else went in one. It's hard, man. It's hard. Your roster was built a certain way. I think if you're going to go as far as humanly possible, you need to generate what you're supposed to be. And we're getting there. You just had a step backwards on a night that really did draw out. Let's be honest. We all love ball. All right, we all love this to death. But there's no way by that eighth inning, ninth inning, when you lose the lead, ah, oh, damn, this is going to go on forever. Please wrap it up. I don't want it to go 12. Can't have 13. Can't have a long, long night. Just not for me. But anyway, they let one slip. They're better than this. And it sucks because Bryce... He made everybody erupt again. What do you know? The guy gets a hold of one. You could smell it yesterday. The warning track. Well, it's only a matter of time. That's just him showing the progression of returning. That element of his game, it's going to happen. He just needs to take 6,000 swings prior to the baseball gods rejuvenating him and letting it roll through the bloodstream. It's inevitable, and we're making the argument that this is probably happening at the best time for this core. It's the backstretch. Now would be literally perfect. Let's take the bull by the horns 
and roll. I do have to admit that when it comes to this pitching, I'm having a hard time trying to describe it. It's enough, and at times, very strong. Even their bullpen. Their bullpen has been one of the best in majors since mid-April. It's hard to get aggravated with them, even though Craig has become more human. I'm just, honestly, a little bit bothered by the fact that I'm not getting what I want out of Jose Alvarado and Saranti Dominguez. It's like crazy. when you. This is where it's so difficult. Talking points-wise, if you didn't know their record, we could bring up so many things and very valid, reasonable things that would make it sound as if this team were where the Yankees are. Aggravated, hate their owner, hate their GM, hate everything about it, want a culture change. They're disgusted. Where the Boston Red Sox are, what's Bloom doing? Alex Cora, Verdugo, it's a mess. It would sound as if this team is spiraling out of control. In fact, it's the other. It's the complete opposite. But it's it's hard to actually put it in perspective on how they're doing this because there's a lot of things that are baffling about this team. And by the way, my forehead is shining like hell. I did just get out of the shower, and it looks like the light that's on me is really, really, really making that thing shine. Holy hell. A little mixture of the shower sweats, I guess, but not really too much. This is strictly lighting. So I apologize if somehow you're watching this on your phone and um, blinding you and you lose eyesight. Okay. Cash throw stinks. I just want to make sure I point that one out. Let's take calls, phone calls. Hear from you. Anytime hotline, let's run it. What an incredibly frustrating loss to an inferior opponent yet again. Did it twice versus the Pirates, did it versus the Marlins, did it versus the Royals, and now again versus the Nationals. Four series in a row where there's a game versus an inferior opponent that we should have won, and we find a way to lose it. Well, real quick, you're not going to win every game ever. So when you start laying out all these teams, while it is annoying, they are going to lose at some point. Your your point still stands, and it is valid. Go crush the Nationals, please. They have no life. I don't want to hear about what they've done recently, and they have actually have been all right, and they haven't been too bad. It, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care that they end up sweeping the Reds. That's what happened prior to this series happening. They took the final game against Milwaukee. So they've put together a few wins in a row. Stop it, please, okay? Even the worst teams in baseball, to, point my, or to prove my point, sometimes there is a little surge where there's a couple games, but at some point it ends because they're fraudulent, and now would be the time for the Phillies to to punch them in the damn jaw on one day. One day, you got 18 innings. Make it hurt! Didn't happen. But you're going to lose at some point. So to to lay out all these recent series, we got to find the line. I mean, the bullpen just hasn't been great lately. The offense had one good inning. Other than that, it was quiet the whole game. I'm not really quite sure why Boom didn't pitch it there in the eighth inning. Doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why we're running Rodolfo Castro up there when he can't field or hit. Very, very, very frustrating game. We let a guy with that has nine home runs all year hit two home runs on us tonight. Very frustrating. Can't be two of six. We won game one, but that was such a frustrating loss yet again. Okay, so frustrating is the word that you describe it, and that's fair. I, I think that's kind of right on the money, to be honest. So, with Alec Boehm, I, I did see some fans upset with the lineup. How are you going to roll this lineup out? It's a doubleheader, and that goes back to why I said it's kind of stupid. I want to see my team in a more reasonable chance to succeed. Both teams have to do it. Both teams are fighting that same level of fatigue, and you're both just as tired finding ways to get food in you and to re-get your body properly, right? You got to get food. Food, you got to get drinks, you got to get hydrated. It's nasty out there, so there's a lot in play. The other team has to do it at the same time. But also, seriously, once again, when you're 8, 9, 10, 11 years old, I don't think it's needed at this level of baseball. I don't think it's needed. Alec Bohm getting a, uh, getting a second game off. Garrett Stubbs getting in there. I don't know. Am I supposed to be uh, 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 
destroying Rob Thompson for that? I don't. If I'm supposed to or not, I'm not mad. I'm, I'm not mad at the lineup. I'm not mad at the lineup. What are the expectations? What is the norm? What is reality here? To expect something like that for game two? They didn't lose because no Alec Boehm, even though Castro stinks. There were plenty of times for this team to win. And and yes, he does lead the team in RBI. You never know what can happen. You slot him in the two-hole. What if he went back-to-back again? Or, or what if he just went with another huge home run again? Not necessarily back-to-back with Kyle Schwarber. That's very difficult to ask. Two times in the same day, just in two different games? Yeah, please, dude. What are you dreaming? I don't know. All right, I should be. I'm pretty damn tired, and it's almost 11 o'clock. I still have to watch Raw from the other night because I didn't get a chance to after SummerSlam, so I put it on my DVR, and I got to tune into that puppy after this, too. So there's a lot on my plate. This team should have won the game. When Bryce Harper gives you the lead right then and there, accomplish the goal. Let's not get dumb here. Let's not get silly. Let's not... Uh, uh, they blew the lead. They blew the lead. It hurts. It hurts. All right, we'll go to Amadeo. What's Amadeo thinking? Well, I guess if you want to go with the cliche, it's hard to split doubleheaders, but I, you should have won both. The first game was amazing. Powers all over the place. Kyle Schwarber, you know, Bohm doing his thing and all that stuff. Game two, the offense just wasn't able to help out the uh, pitching, and that's the sad fact there. You know, Ranger Suarez, I thought overall he was solid, but there was still some things that I, you know, repeated patterns from his previous starts of losing his command, which I didn't like. And, you know, you know, Rob Thompson, I thought mismanaged the bullpen just a little bit. You know, why bring out Hoffman for another inning? Why not just go Serenity for a clean or something like that? It's just weird stuff. I'm not going to go fully crazy over the split. You still have a great chance to win the series in the next two games. The bright side is, the power looks like it's showing back, which is a really good sign, and Trey Turner especially with the way he's hitting lately. So just throw game two in the trash, build off game one, and just move on from there. Trey has been so good. Trey is back. He definitely is feeling himself, and he's back. And it is a joy because this is outrageous. When he starts clicking, it's game over, and he puts you in fantastic positions, and it's awesome. It's electric on the base paths. Unreal, and I think we're finally getting a grasp of it. And and I'm with you there. I, I guess the only argument I would make against what you're saying, and you're not even wrong, it's just the way that you look at it. Because, okay, where's the offense to have the pitchings back after Craig Kimbrell allows a homer, even though he got screwed on a third call pitch or a third strike call pitch? I I, I feel when the score was four to three in the or four to sorry yeah four to two. When, oh, yeah, okay. My eyesight is all shaky. It's like I couldn't read what was on the screen. When Harper gave you a 3-2 lead, and then Bryson Stock gave you a 4-2 insurance, you win that game. Two-run lead, a few winnings to go against that dreadful lineup. You got to win that game. So I think the offense through five lined it up. They set it up. Take it home. Let's get back to the promised land here and shut her down. I'm more aggravated than the pitching than looking at it as if the offense wasn't there in game two. It popped just enough, okay? It it rarely peaked its head up, but it did. Can we finally secure the bag? And they fumbled it. And even if you do bring in a Sir Anthony instead of a Hoffman or anything, I don't feel great about Sir Anthony right now. So with hindsight and how it ended with Hoffman, Hoffman got you out of that jam. And I didn't really hate it. Because if you go back to that at-bat that the pop-up occurred, that was in the seventh inning because you did have bases loaded. Okay. It was a three-pitch at bat. So three pitches, and then he goes back out there. I'm okay with Hoffman after three pitches getting the leash and having the leash expand. 
that is, giving him longer to work with. All right, that's my thought on the doubleheader. It'll be more of a shorter one today. It is what it is. We'll talk again tomorrow after we see what the hell happens. Appreciate you guys. We'll be talking soon.